Hello, my name is Sally Caselli. The following is a comprehensive tutorial on using Microsoft Teams. This concepts-based tutorial is ideal for employee training or those who want to become proficient in using Microsoft Teams in the workplace. To make the most out of this tutorial, consider following along. Let's first briefly go over key components of Microsoft Teams. Microsoft Teams is a platform that incorporates a variety of tools for effective collaboration. This includes the Teams and Channels component. Think of this as a virtual space or sandbox for Teams to collaborate. Next is the Chat module, which enables individuals to chat instantly with others within Teams or other Teams across the organization. Then we have the Meetings module, which is tightly integrated into scheduling such as Microsoft Outlook and includes tools for video conferencing, screen sharing, and meeting recordings. For organizations that have integrated calling services, Teams also includes a core module for making and managing calls and the related tasks. Additionally, Teams enables users to expand its functionality by adding a variety of applications and services as needed. In addition to all of this, it incorporates familiar applications such as Excel, Word, PowerPoint, OneNote, and OneDrive, all of these in one place to enable the Teams to collaborate effectively to increase productivity. So stay tuned as we will next get started using Teams. In this brief session of the Microsoft Teams tutorial, we'll go over the process for downloading Teams and signing in. So if you have Windows 11 in your PC to the right of the search on the taskbar, you have this chat option. So you can click on it and then click on Get Started. Now to use Teams, the free version of Teams with a personal account, you can simply click on sign in and start using Teams. However, if your organization uses Teams, whether it's a school or in the corporate environment, then you may need to download Microsoft Teams for work. So to do that, you'll click on the link here and then you'll click on download the desktop version and you'll need to install that with the defaults. Once the application has been installed, you can click here on search and do a search for Microsoft Teams for work or school. And notice here we have the Microsoft Teams work or school and then click on it. So we click here on get started and then you will need to sign in with your work or school account. You may need to have to accept this to allow the organization to manage this device. And now you are signed in. And on the left hand side, notice that we have a variety of tabs such as activity, the chat module, teams module, assignments. This is because it's an education account, the calendar option, calls, files, and apps that we can either locate or search and install. So stay tuned for the next module where we'll actually go into each one of those modules and cover them in depth. In this module of the Microsoft Teams tutorial, I'll go over the key components of the interface in Microsoft Teams. Once you're signed into Microsoft Teams, at the very top here we have the search bar. Here you can search for messages, files, and you can even put a slash and it will display like anybody who is busy or anybody that is away or anyone that is available and so on with that status. To the right of the search box, we have the configuration icon and notice you can check for updates, you can change the zoom, and you can go into the settings for this application. And I'll get into those at a later module. To the right of the configuration area, we have the account that we are signed in with. 
And this is where you can set your status if you are not setting it within your calendar. And this is where you can manage your account or switch accounts or switch to Teams for personal use. Now on the left hand side, this is where you have the various modules in Microsoft Teams. And the key modules in Microsoft Teams are the chat module, that is one of the default modules, where you can have private conversations one-on-one -on -one or instant conversations with members of the same team or teams across the organization. Then further down here, you have the Teams module. The Teams module, think of it as a sandbox, a virtual space for a group of individuals working together on a project. The Teams module will go into more details as to how to create Teams and how to use the Teams module and the Channels module within the Teams component. For now, just get an understanding that uh, you can create a team or you can join a team by entering a code to join that team. Further down, we have the calendar, and this is where you can schedule meetings and use the video conferencing tools. Further down, you have the calls option, and this is for organizations that have integrated the phone systems with Microsoft Teams. Further down, you have the Files option, and this is where you can organize files to share with other individuals within Teams in conjunction with Microsoft OneDrive. Further down, this is where you can add or pin additional applications as part of your organization's approved applications, or you can click More Apps and pick from the list of applications, whether by category or by searching for any of the applications, navigating to any necessary applications that you want to integrate as part of Microsoft Teams. Further down here, you have the help option. This is where you can learn about the various topics related to using Microsoft Teams. You can uh, access Microsoft training on using Microsoft Teams what's new, or suggest features, or post questions to the community, and so on. Now, on the very top left, you have the activity feed. This will be a listing of various activities, what's happening, whether it is a missed call, or chats coming in or going out, or mentions, or anything related to that. To learn Microsoft Teams, just keep in mind that the key components are going to be listed here on the left. Think of these as tabs. Then on the second column, you have the options where you can further configure items related to that module that you selected. So for example, right now I selected chat, and under chat I can switch from the chat module to the contacts module. And then on the top right, there are additional filtering tools or options to create a new chat and so on. Same thing with... Uh, any of these other tabs. So we have here the calendar that we have selected, and then to the right of it, we have all the options related to the calendar. So stay tuned, and we are going to go into each one of those modules and cover those modules in depth. In this module of the Microsoft Teams tutorial, I will demonstrate how to create a team within Microsoft Teams. Once we are signed into Microsoft Teams, on the left-hand side, we have the Teams module. This is the core functionality of Microsoft Teams. It's designed so that you can create a group or a workspace for a bunch of individuals to collaborate and keep track of all their communications for that project or a bunch of projects. Once we selected Teams, now we have two options. We can create a team or join an existing team that someone else has created. In the case of an organization where there are many teams, you can also search for teams on the search box up here on the top right. To create a team, we simply click on Create Team, and then give it a name. You can give it a description, and then select whether you want this team private, so that only you can add members, or whether you want to make it public and anyone in your organization can join the team. So in this case, I want to make this a private team, and then I click on Next. 
Next, we need to add the members to the team, and we can search for these members by email or by name or any of those fields. In my case here, this is a live system, so I'm going to use some generic accounts for demonstration purposes only. So I'll pick here the online instructor account, and you get the idea at this point. We are picking from the list of accounts, and then we click on Add. Next, you can specify the permissions for those particular members. So you can make them owner of this team or just a member of the team. Owner obviously would be able to invite additional individuals to the team. Then we click on Close. Go under Teams. Notice we have the Distance Education team. It currently includes only the three individuals, myself and the other accounts. You have the icon for this team, and you can change this to have a particular picture for this team. To the right of the name of this team, we have these three dots where you can manage the team members. You can add channels, and I'll go over the channels in a moment. So you can manage the team, you can add new team members, or you can leave the team, edit the team, or get a link to this team, and then create tags or even delete the team from here. Right below the name of our team, we have these general options. In Microsoft Teams, there are what's called channels. Let's say you have a team that needs to work on distance education. There are general topics related to distance education, but then we also might need another channel for just to keep the conversation concentrated on course development for distance education. So those would be the separate channels, and I'll create a channel in a moment here. To the right of the, this particular team, now these would be the resources related to this team. So again, keep in mind, you have here the Teams tab, you go to the actual team, so you're going from left to right. And then on the top here, you have the general, you have the post, this would be the various posts where you can post the conversation for the rest of the team members have the files option that the team members are sharing. Then you have the option to add new tabs for your team members. And here you can add a variety of applications for this particular team. You can enable Microsoft Word or any of these particular applications to extend the tools that this team would need to complete their work. To add the task planner, all I have to do is select it and then I'll simply click on Save. So again, the idea is you create a team, you manage the members of the team, then within that team, you create various conversations or discussions. Now, this will be part of the general discussion for this particular team. If I wanted to make a quick post for the rest of the members of this team, so I have the Posts area, and then I click here on New Conversation, so you could post a question here for other members of the team. And notice right below this, we also have the formatting options. We could add attachments, various emojis, GIFs, and stickers, add it to a stream, give a praise to a member. You could have approvals enabled, and a whole bunch of other options that you can integrate as part of your chat. To post this, we simply press Send. And now this has been posted for all the members of this team. If I wanted to mention only a particular member of a team, then I could use the at symbol in front of their name. One of the nice features of using the conversation mode, the chat mode within the team, is that you can actually modify, once you send a message, you can further modify that message even after sending it. So let's say I send this and I want to edit it, I can go to the top right of this particular message and then click on the three dots here for, for more options, then click on edit and then tag someone else and then hit enter. And on the recipient's end, this will be updated. To add a file attachment as part of the post, type the message and then attach a file. We can attach a file by browsing Microsoft Teams, going to our recent files, or going to OneDrive, or simply upload the file from this computer. We navigate the file, we click on Open, and then press Send or hit Enter. 
anytime we use files, any of the files that we have throughout our conversation, there's collaboration within the team, all of those files are going to be also stored under the files option here next to general. So we are on the general channel for the distance education team. And even though I did not upload this file in the files area, if I click on files, the file that I just sent will be posted in the files area. So this is a really great feature that Microsoft is aggregating all the files throughout the conversations and embedding them as part of the documents area. From here, we could further edit this file by double clicking on it or download the file, share a link to it or add a link to OneDrive and so on. Since I added the tasks module earlier, we can click here on the tasks tab and this was an add-on application. And from here, I could create a new task. For example, I can set a, a due date and assign this to one of the members of the team and then click on add task. And then once that team member completes this task, I'll be notified about it. To just quickly summarize, we have the Teams module, we have the Distance Education team. Within the Distance Education team, we have the General Channel. Within this channel, we have the posts, we have a tracking of all the conversations, the files. On the top, we have a link to meet with this team, and we can click to schedule a meeting now or for a later time. If you want to make available particular applications for your team, such as Microsoft Word or OneNote, which would be very helpful for team meetings and so on, then you can click here on Add a tab and then select the application that you want to add. So in this case, I want to, let's say, add the OneNote application and make it available for the team members. It's going to be called the Distance Education Notebook. To remove an app that you either added accidentally or you no longer want in there, you can click on the drop down next to the particular app that you added to your Teams channel and then select Remove. Next, in the next segment, I'll go over how to create a channel and further manage your team within Microsoft Teams. In this module of the Microsoft Teams tutorial, I'll demonstrate how to add channels to an existing team in Microsoft Teams. So here we have Microsoft Teams for workplace or education, and under Teams, I have the distance education team. We click on it and then notice by default on any of the teams, typically you'll have this general channel. A channel is just a way to post announcements, to hold meetings, or share updates, or find files and information for a specific area. This is basically a specific area within a larger team. For example, here we have distance education, but then another channel within distance education could be course development. So to create a new channel, we go to distance education, Click on the three dots here, the configuration for more options, and then we click on add a channel. Next, we give it a name. And here under privacy, you can customize this so that only a specific teammates have access to it, or it's shared for all the members of your team, or it can be also available to the organization. If you want all the members of the team to have access, you can select to automatically show this in everyone's channel list and then click on add. From here, under the development channel, we can have a new conversation with the team members and it will aggregate the files that you want to make available to the team members, either from the conversations or by you simply uploading the files and linking and making them available related to course development. Or you as a team organizer, you can add additional tabs for the team members to be able to access as part of this channel. So let's say we want here to have one note. We simply select it and press save. Under the channel that we created a moment ago, notice that we have additional options. We can get notifications for all the activity or just some of the notifications or turn the notifications off. We can select to manage the channel. 
We can also invite someone else to participate in this channel. We can get a direct link to the channel and further modify it or add other connectors related to this channel. If we select here to manage this channel, notice there are additional permissions that we can apply, such as the channel moderation. We can turn on and off moderating the discussion within the channel and whether you want to allow guests to make new posts. Further on, you can check under analytics and the engagement of the participants within this channel for a particular time frame. So like we did in the general channel for distance education, here we can start separate conversations just for the individuals and the topic of course development. You can select to attach files, very similar to how we did earlier. You can use Teams, Channels, or the OneDrive, or upload it from the computer, and then post it to the channel. Now, to reply to one of those posts within the channel, you simply type Reply here, and then hit Enter or press Send. You can create as many channels as you want within a team, and think of the channels as just a, a narrower virtual space for a particular team or a smaller team to collaborate and keep track of all their communications. In this module of the Microsoft Teams tutorial, I'll demonstrate how to add new members to an existing team in Microsoft Teams. So we go here to Microsoft Teams and we have this existing team, the distance education team. And now let's say we wanted to add a new individual to it. So we go under the configuration icon here, the three dots, and we select manage team. Here we can go and view the owner of the team and the members of the team. To remove a member from this team, we simply go to the right here, press the X to remove them, or to make them an administrator to this team or an owner, we simply click on the drop down and select owner. If you had a lot of members in this team to search for particular members, you can start searching here in this search window. If there are pending requests to join your team, they will show up here under pending requests, and then you'll need to approve those requests, provided your team, when you configured it, it was with approval only. Under channels, this is where it will list the existing channels within your team, including the deleted channels for this particular team. Further down here, you have the settings option, and this is where you can adjust and change the team picture, member permissions as to what the team members can and cannot do, what the guests can do or cannot do in your team, mentions, who can use the mentions option, you can set a team code and generate a team code and give it to prospective team members. The fun stuff, what to allow and what not to allow. And whether you want to allow stickers and particular tags related to this team. Under tags here you can manage, you can determine who can manage the tags for the particular team. Under analytics you can see the participation. And then under apps this will give us an option as to what apps we want and make available to the members of this team by default. Notice you can click on more apps here on the top right and extend the usefulness of Microsoft Teams with additional functionality. Under tags, this is where you can create new tags for your team. To add a new member, we go here on the right hand side and then click on add member. We select the member and then click on Add, click on Close. The new member will actually receive an email invite to join this team. And that new member will have access to all the existing communication and all the various channels within this team. So in this case, I'll reply as I'm invited to this team. And notice it says here, got it. Now the question might come up and you might say, there is someone outside of my organization that I want to make part of this team. So how do I add someone outside of the organization to be part of this team? 
To do that, you can go to your team, to the team configuration, click on the three dots, and choose to add a member, or go to the previous screen that I mentioned earlier. From here, you can simply type the email address of that individual, and then select to add them as a guest. Click on Add. Notice you are not prompted here to give them any additional permissions, and then click on Close. That new individual will receive an email and become part of this team. And then, depending on the permissions that you have defined for the team, whether guests can view certain aspects of the team's information, then they will or will not be able to access that particular information within the teams. In this module of the Microsoft Teams tutorial, I'll demonstrate how to add applications and make them available to your team in Microsoft Teams. We have the distance education team. We click on the three dots on the top right and then click on the more options, the three dots here next to the name, and then select manage team. Then we click here on apps on the right hand side. And these are the apps that are currently available by default for this particular team. If we do not want one of those applications as part of this team, we can simply press delete on the right hand side and it will remove it from this, from this virtual space for this team. To add more apps, we click here on more apps. And in this case, I'm going to add one note. So we can search here, either go by uh, to Microsoft by category or productivity or, or simply search OneNote. Once you have identified the app that you want, in this case OneNote, click on the drop down, choose to add it to the team by selecting the Add to Team. Notice it's going to give us the team that we want to associate this with and then click on Set a Tab. We can either create a new notebook for this team or use an existing one and then press save. From here on, if we go to the distance learning team under general, we have noticed the distance education notebook and it's on both channels. The notebook can come in handy for taking meeting notes along the way. So this would be your meeting minutes and so on. If you click here on this icon on the left, here in the bottom, we add a new section. And then, let's say this will be our meeting minutes. Then we go here and add a new page, and then type away your minutes using the tools at the top. Now that we have the meeting minutes section, we go in the bottom here and click on Add Page. This will add a new option for the meeting minutes, let's say for June 19th, 2023, and so on. So it's a great collaboration tool for tracking and managing documents or notes or charts or whatever you want within your Teams platform. If you no longer want a particular tool listed as one of the tabs, you can click on the drop down and then select Remove and that will remove it for all the team members and they will receive a notification as well. In this module of the Microsoft Teams tutorial, I'll demonstrate how to start a meeting in Microsoft Teams. So we are here in Microsoft Teams for work or education and we have this team called Distance Education. We have various team members as part of this team and then we also have the various channels within this team. So let's say we want to have a meeting with this team, a virtual meeting, a video conference meeting with this team. If we want to start the meeting instantly, we go to the general channel or the course development channel. And then on the top right, you have this meet icon. Notice there is also a drop down. You can schedule a meeting right away. You can start it right now or you can schedule a meeting for some time in the future. So to start a meeting, we click on Meet here. Right now, I'm turning off the video for the purposes of the recording of this video, but you can choose your microphone and then click on Join Now. We can either send them a link via email, so we can copy the link, and then go to our email application, whether it's Outlook or something else, and then send them an email invitation. 
or we can invite the attendees directly by clicking under Add Participants, select the names of the attendees. And it's going to call them at this moment to actually join our live meeting. So you'll get the idea, so I'm going to cancel it. And you can invite more than one individual to join. Once they have responded, you'll be able to interface with them via video, just like uh, typically or traditionally we have Zoom. And from here, you can utilize the chat option, breakout rooms, very similar to Zoom. You can change the background options and so on. Enable and disable your camera and the microphone and the screen sharing and so on. From here, you can control the meeting, whether you want to leave the meeting and end this meeting as well. Leaving the meeting obviously will leave it open for other individuals. Ending the meeting is because it will end the meeting because you're the organizer of this meeting. In this session of the Microsoft Teams tutorial, I'll demonstrate how to schedule a meeting for your team in Microsoft Teams. So here in Microsoft Teams for work or education, I have a team called Distance Education. Here I can go to any of these channels on my team. And then on the top right, notice that there is an option for Meet. If we click on the drop down, click on Schedule a Meeting, and then put a meeting title. Next, add the attendees. Here we can search for the attendees. We can also add optional attendees the time and date, a particular location, if that was going to take place on site, meeting details, and so on. Now notice on the top right, you also have a scheduling assistant. Now in my case, these are test accounts, so it's not going to display the actual accurate schedule for those accounts because they are not maintaining a particular schedule. However, for other users, you'll be able to view their availability, so you, you will be able to find a good time for you to meet with them. Notice you also have suggested times, and then once you're all set with this, you press send, and then this will add it to the feed here for the discussion for the posts feed. It will also send it an email invite, and it will prompt them in their scheduling software, in most cases, Microsoft Outlook. In this module of the Microsoft Teams tutorial, I'll demonstrate how to record a meeting in Microsoft Teams. I'm in Microsoft Teams, and I have this team called Distance Education. Under Distance Education, I have these various channels here, so I can go to either one of those channels and let's say under course development, at this point I want to schedule a meeting. So I click here on Meet and click on Join Now. At this point I can invite attendees by sending them a link to the meeting, or I can invite participants by simply selecting them from here as part of my team, and then request them to join. Let's assume that they joined and then I have the video webcams here as part of the team collaboration. Now notice three dots here, more actions, click on it and then scroll down and then click on start recording. Notice that there is the red button here and it has started the recording. To stop it, we go under more and then we select stop recording. The link to the recording, once it's done, it will appear in the chat area of our meeting. If you scheduled your meeting from the calendar option within Teams, the recording will show up with the meeting details. However, we didn't do it through the calendar option, we did it through Teams option over here. So the link, you'd have to send it to the attendees or it will be as part of the chat option as you saw earlier. In this module of the Microsoft Teams tutorial, I'll demonstrate how to send an announcement to your team in Microsoft Teams. So we are here in Microsoft Teams and we have a team called Distance Education. 
and we have the channels here general or course development and then under posts by default anything that we post it will be under the post category so we click here on new conversation so we want to send an announcement let's say that the distance education handbook is due by a certain time now prior to pressing send we can go ahead and click format and then we can add a subject by default this will be a conversation if we press post right at this point. However, if we click on the drop down, we can change this to be an announcement. And then under the announcement, we can allow everybody to reply or only moderators, and we can post it also to multiple channels if needed. Under the headline option, we can type a headline and also modify this further by changing the color scheme by adding an image or an illustration. We can format this and make it a subheading, add file attachments if necessary, and then press send. Now this will stand out from the other conversations or posts as part of this team in Microsoft Teams. In this segment of the Microsoft Teams tutorial, I'll demonstrate how to save messages or conversations in Microsoft Teams. So let's say we have a team and there are lots of conversations going on. However, certain conversations, then we want to make sure that we have saved them. So let's say we have this announcement down here and we want to save it. So we click on the announcement or on the message itself. It doesn't matter whether it's a regular announcement or a message. And then click on the three dots and more options on the top right. And then click on save this message. Then go to another channel, let's say, and pick a message and save that message as well. Now to locate your saved messages, you can go to your profile picture on the top and then click on saved and it will display only the messages that you have saved through the various channels in Microsoft Teams. You can also track down the saved messages in Teams by clicking here on search and then putting a slash and then saved. And then hit enter or select it and it will display the saved messages within Microsoft Teams. In this module of the Microsoft Teams tutorial, I'll demonstrate how to use the chat module in Microsoft Teams. So we go here to Microsoft Teams and one of the modules is chat. Now chat can be used to interact directly in real time with one or more individuals at the same time, a group chat. So to interact with an individual, you simply click on the chat module here and then search for that particular individual, locate the individual, and then click on it. And then on the bottom right, start typing the message. Now, depending on what their status, whether they are in the office or not in the office, you may get a message similar to this. That is their present status. So in this case, you type the message. Further down here, you can format the chat if you want it. You can add attachments and use any of those tools on the bottom then press send. The individual on the other end will receive the question and then if they are available, they'll respond. And the response will be displayed very similar to this. And then you'll interface with that particular individual as needed. Now under the chat area, notice that they also have files that you have exchanged with this individual. And then any files that you attach or send via Microsoft Teams at any point, any of those files will be added to the files area. They will be aggregated in this area. Under activity, it's going to list the activity like any prior correspondence that you have had with this individual. And then it's going to even look up the linked profile for this particular individual in your chat. Notice that as part of this chat with this individual, you can also add other tabs and other applications as part of the conversation with this particular individual. Notice here to the right, there are three dots as well under more options. 
you can pop out this chat or you can pin this chat on the top left. So if you had 50 conversations or 100 conversations or whatever, uh, they're as part of your correspondence with other individuals, you can pin particular chats to always stay at the top of the list for you. And it will allow for up to 15 items to be pinned as part of your chat module. In this module, I'll demonstrate how to configure group chats in Microsoft Teams. So we have the general chat, and we are not uh, utilizing the actual team component at this point. We simply want to create a chat with two or more individuals, and then pin that chat so that we can utilize it in the future. To create a new chat, you can go under Chat Area here, and then click on New Chat. At this point, you can select a group or a tag, and let's say I want two or more individuals to join this chat. You pick those individuals, and then you start typing a message. You can add attachments, you can format this, and then press send. So we have in this chat, we have the correspondence back and forth, the engagement of the various team members, and then on the left-hand side, we have this particular chat group. On the top right here, where the name of the chat is, if we don't like the name currently that is there, we can uh, click on this pencil icon and then give it a new name. And then press Save. Under Files, this will contain all the files that we have exchanged, and then we can add other app to be used by this group as part of our discussions moving forward. Now, typically, the new chats will be listed here on the left-hand side in the order that they were last used and under Recent. And then the top section, there will be the pinned chats. If we are commonly using this team chat, this group chat, we can pin this so it will always show up at the top section of our chat area. So we click on the configuration or more options here, the three dots, and then we click on pin, and it will be always listed in the top section. Notice you can also mute if you do not want to be receiving alerts from a particular chat. You can mute those or control those options from here. Under the chat area, notice that you can also filter conversations by selecting only the unread chats, or meetings, or apps, or anything happening within the chat module. In this module of the Microsoft Teams tutorial, I'll demonstrate how to start a video call, or an audio call, or even share your screen in a group chat. Under the chat option, I have this group chat, the distance learning group. And in this group, I have these participants, these individuals. I could add more, or I could leave the group, and so on from this icon here on the top right. Let's say that we want to start an instant video chat. To start the video chat, we simply click here on the video icon on the top right. <laughs> And as you noticed, it's going to bring everybody as part of that team chat automatically. The same way it will be for an audio chat or an audio call. So we can click here on the audio call icon and it will bring everybody together as part of this discussion. If I wanted to share the screen with the whole team, click here on screen sharing, select the screen that I want to share, and it will present my screen to all the members of the audience. In this module of the Microsoft Teams tutorial, I'll demonstrate how to use the calendar option in conjunction with video conferencing in Microsoft Teams. Calendar is one of the key components of Microsoft Teams, and it's very tightly integrated with Microsoft Outlook and your calendar availability in Microsoft Outlook. 
to go to the calendar, we simply click on calendar on the left, and then on the right hand side, we click the view for the calendar. Now, let's say that we want to add an appointment for sometime next week. So we go here to next week, and let's say on Monday, I simply select the block of time. It will prompt me to enter a title for my meeting. Next, I need to add the team members or the required attendees. So I search for them. It gives me also a status of the, that particular team. And that status is for the time at this point when I'm looking it up. It's not going to be for Monday in this case. If I wanted optional attendees, I can click on this Add button and then add the optional attendees here in the bottom. Then you're picking the time and date, whether you want to repeat this. If this is related to a particular channel, you can include to broadcast this and add this as part of a particular team. Put the meeting details. And then under response options, you can specify to request responses. There are more options here as well, whether you want registration or not. Now, one of the key helpful tools here is also the scheduling assistant. So you'll click on Scheduling Assistant, and this will give us the availability of the staff for these particular days. In this case, it shows as white. Now, these are test accounts, and notice for uh, my account here, notice from 9 to 10, or 9 to 9.30, this time is blocked, so I'm not available at that time. But I can go and change this by dragging this slider to another time, it's giving us the best time for all the team members to meet. Then we press send. And now to see the meeting details, we can go double click in here. They'll also get automatically a link to join via Microsoft Teams. On the right hand side, there will be a tracking option as to who has acknowledged it. The attendance for that particular meeting. There will be a whiteboard option if you plan to use it. Breakout rooms, if you choose to create breakout rooms as part of that meeting. And then questions and answers. Once the meeting starts, you can click here on Join. And that will be using the Microsoft Teams video conferencing solution. You'll click on Join now. And then other members will be able to join via webcams here. And control the video and audio from here on the top. Share the screen as well. Under the More options, if you are the organizer of the meeting, you can click here to record the meeting from the bottom. Now, once the meeting has been recorded, the meeting recording will actually show up as part of the meeting details within that time slot at the scheduled time or that entry on your calendar. So we'll go ahead and stop the meeting. We'll stop the recording and then leave the meeting as well. Assuming that this was the Monday meeting. Now let's suppose that the meeting is over and we uh, go back to the meeting details and we want to look at the recording. To access the recording, we can go here to the meeting details and the meeting recording will be located in two places. We can go here under the chat option and notice we have this option here where it says the recording is available and you can press play. Or you can go under the Files option and notice there is this meeting recording here. Double click on it and you'll be able to view it. It will most likely prompt you to log into the cloud uh, to your Microsoft account in order to view it. In this segment of the Microsoft Teams tutorial, I'll demonstrate how to record a meeting in Microsoft Teams and then access the recording after the meeting is complete. So we go here to the calendar. Let's say that on Tuesday, I want to have a meeting at 9.30. I put in the details, add the attendees. I could use the scheduling assistant and so on, and then press send. Now let's say that the meeting time came by and now I open the meeting and everybody joins. And since I'm the organizer of the meeting, I want to go ahead and record it. I go here under more, scroll down to start recording. Obviously there would be web cameras here. Once the meeting is over, 
we leave the meeting, end it, or stop the recording as well from where we started. Typically, you might have to give it a little time for the recording to be processed. If we go back here to the calendar option within Teams, go to that particular meeting, the meeting recording will be in two places within that meeting details. So we double click here and then we can go to the meeting to look for the meeting recording under the chat option and also under the files option here on the top left. Under the chat, this is where it will display it and you can press play to view it. It will open a web browser for you to sign into your Microsoft account to your Teams account to view the recording. And if we go to files, it will be in here and again you'll need to sign in to the browser with your Teams account to view it. And then you'll press play. Larger for now. Obviously there will be web. From here you can share then this recording by clicking on the share icon. Select share again or you can copy the link to this sharing or embed it or manage permissions for viewing it and so on. In this segment of the Microsoft Teams tutorial, I'll demonstrate how to join a meeting in Microsoft Teams. So in most cases, when you receive a meeting invite for a Microsoft Teams meeting, the meeting invite will look very similar to this. We receive an email and you can accept the meeting by clicking on the accept here and then send the response now and so on. Once you have accepted the meeting, then you can go to your calendar, go to the meeting details, double click on it and then join the meeting by clicking on the link as part of the meeting invite. And then from there you'll click on open and then join through Microsoft Teams. In other cases someone may send you the meeting ID and you may have to join the meeting manually. And you can do that from Microsoft Teams by clicking on calendar and then clicking on join with an ID and then you'll enter the meeting ID and the password and then click on join. In this segment of the Microsoft Teams tutorial, I'll demonstrate how to start an instant meeting in Microsoft Teams. So to start an instant meeting, we go to Microsoft Teams and then click on calendar. And then on the top right, we have an option for meet now. Then click on meet now here give it a title to the meeting, and then you can either get a link to share with participants, and you can share that via email, and then simply click on Start Meeting, and then click on Join Now. Uh, you're also, again, prompted to get the meeting link or add the participants and invite them from the right-hand side by either searching for their name or uh, inviting them if they are part of your team. Once you're done with your meeting, you click on leave or end meeting by clicking on the down arrow here and then select end meeting for all. And obviously to schedule a meeting for some time in the future, you'd use the new meeting option here on the top right. In this module of the Microsoft Teams tutorial, I'll demonstrate how to create a class meeting in Microsoft Teams. So we are here in the calendar module within Teams. And then on the top right hand side here next to new meeting, we need to click on the drop down and then select class. These options are very similar. So we click here on class. On the left, we have the general information about this particular meeting. So you enter the title of your meeting and then you need to add the attendees. So here is where you'll send the invites to your students in your class and you'd have to have the email addresses for them. Then you can put further meeting details here in the bottom left. So, so far nothing is different. So it's just like a standard meeting. The difference for a class meeting is, is that you can set up a lobby where somebody is allowed, permitted to enter your meeting room. So in this case, we have those that are co-organizers will be automatically allowed to join the meeting. However, you can change it so that anyone within the organization can be trusted to be uh, joining the meeting or everyone that has the link to the meeting can join the meeting. So the safest one to minimize any of the issues would be to choose everyone. 
However, if it's a highly sensitive meeting, then obviously you want to approve anyone that is allowed to join the meeting. The other settings here include allowing the microphone for attendees, allowing the camera, so obviously you want those on unless you have a need to turn them off, whether you want to allow the chat module within the meeting, and then further down, you have additional settings even for an interpreter and Q&A and so on. Notice you can announce when somebody joins or leaves the room and allow certain callers to bypass the lobby. Then save those settings, send the invite. The students then will receive a meeting invite, very similar to this. They'll need to either accept it or decline it and so on, but they'll join the meeting by using the information at the bottom of the meeting invite. In this module of the Microsoft Teams tutorial, I'll briefly go over how to make video or audio calls using Microsoft Teams. Now, this is not using a telephone system. This is just using a soft phone for Microsoft Teams within the Calls module in Teams. So we go here to Calls, and then we can search for a name. You can search in your contacts, and by adding contacts or linking this to your Microsoft Outlook contacts. Search for the individual here. Once you have located the individual, then if you want to make a video call, you would simply press video. In this segment of the Microsoft Teams tutorial, I'll briefly go over the files option in Microsoft Teams. On the left-hand side on Microsoft Teams, there is this module called Files. And the Files option is any of the files that we have access through our collaboration with various teams in this platform or files that we have sent to other individuals as part of our interactions. So notice we have the option for recent files that we have been using. Then there are also the Microsoft Teams files that we have stored in the Teams module here on the, on the left-hand side, items that we have downloaded. We can access, and from here we can access the OneDrive files from the web. If you prefer to integrate additional services as part of the files option within Microsoft Teams, you can also click here on Add Cloud Storage and then select to add whether Dropbox or other cloud tools or file storage platforms such as Google Drive and so on. Because it's so tightly integrated with the other Microsoft products, you'll be able to simply click on them and it will open Microsoft 365, not the desktop version of Word, but it's the Microsoft 365 version of it. So you'll find most likely that the functionality of the cloud version, it's a little bit limited than the desktop version that you might have in your PC. In this segment of the Microsoft Teams tutorial, I'll briefly discuss how you can extend the functionality of Microsoft Teams by adding various apps to the Teams platform. On the left-hand side of Microsoft Teams, there's this Apps option. And right above the Apps option, there are these three dots. That means that there are some additional added apps. So these would be apps that didn't make it here on the left-hand panel for your icons, but yet they are installed as part of your account. So if I wanted, let's say, the, the OneNote or any of these apps that already show up in here, click on them to open them, I will be able to simply click on it and it will open it up. If you want to have this always show up on the left hand side, you can right click on it and then select pin. If there are other applications that you're interested in having in your computer, you can simply click here on apps and then locate the application that you want to install and integrate as part of Microsoft Teams. And notice there are a lot of uh, categories, whether it's education, applications, 
and even workflows. So let's say I'm interested in approvals. I can search here for approvals and click on it. Click to add it. And now approvals has been added here on the left hand panel. If you want to pin it for future access to have it easily accessible, you can right click on it and then pick pin. Otherwise, you'll have to look on the three dots for more apps. You can add an app for you to use yourself as part of the platform, or you can add the app to particular teams in the platform. So for example, I have here distance learning. I could have added that to be used by that team and assign it to the team. In this segment of the Teams tutorial, I'll demonstrate how to use the activity tool in Microsoft Teams. You have the option for looking at your feed of things that are happening with the Teams and correspondence and mentions and interfacing through the platform with others. And all of those items will be listed here under the feed. Now for the feed, you can select to view only the unread items or all the items. You can also configure it here under settings to display what type of activity you want as part of your feed. So if you say all activity and all reactions, then it will display all of those notifications and list them in there. Notice also there is a um, filter option where you can filter uh, to look at only the mentions or replies, or reactions, or missed calls, voicemails, or various apps as well. So you're basically categorizing and filtering through any of these categories. The other thing that you can do is, uh, once we get out of the settings, notice that there is a drop-down below the feed option, and you can select My Activity. This will display all your interactions with other peers, the time and date, if you double click on it, it'll take you in the context of what you did for that particular time and date. In this module of the Microsoft Teams tutorial, I'll demonstrate how to change and modify the settings for the Teams platform. So we are here logged in Microsoft Teams and to get to settings, we go here to these three dots in the top right next to our profile picture, and then click on settings. Under general, we can change it to dark mode or high contrast or the default mode. We can select the chat density, the layout, whether we want it as a list or as a grid, and also whether we want to start the application automatically. This would be helpful to do so that you can receive notifications, and that would be a good thing to enable. Other settings to change here would be under accounts. This is where you can log out of the account and add another account or switch accounts. Under privacy, this is where you can manage various privacy settings. And then under notifications, this is where you can select how often you want to receive an email when you miss an announcement or a chat notification. Because with Microsoft Teams, if you are not responding right away to a, a chat notification, you can set it so that you can receive an automatic email after a few minutes have passed by. Further down here under chats, you can select what the notifications you want to receive, whether you want only messages, whether you want only mentions or reactions. And then further down under devices, this is where you'd select what camera to utilize and what microphone to utilize as well, and also test the microphone settings. Under files, this is where you can determine which files to open first as your preference, whether you want to browse for the files or you want to use the Teams files option. In the calls area, these settings come in handy. If the phone system has been integrated into Microsoft Teams and you can specify how soon to forward calls to voicemail, how to configure the voicemail, set the ringtones, and so on. It's highly customizable, but a little bit buried away up here on the top right.
In this module of the Microsoft Teams tutorial, I'll demonstrate how to use the calls feature in Microsoft Teams. Now this is the integrated phone system as part of the Microsoft Teams. You can use a soft phone, the application here on the desktop after clicking on calls, or you can use a physical phone in your office integrated with Microsoft Teams. Once we click here on calls on the left, notice that uh, we have here the contacts option or the phone option. The phone option, this is the soft phone area. So we can, so you can search for an individual here and I'm not gonna do the searching for privacy reasons. You select the number and then press call and then press call over here. Then Microsoft Teams is going to launch the dialer and from there, Notice that you have the microphone icon where you can mute it from here, or you can add additional participants, or put the call on hold, or transfer it, or park it, and so on. To hang up, you can simply click on leave. If you want to display the keypad, uh, you can click on the keypad icon and simply punch in the numbers to dial or to change to transfer or things of that nature. So that's how you make a call using a contact. Now to make a call by simply typing the number, enter the numbers in there and then press call. Once you're done with the call, you can press leave and it'll close it. The call history will be displayed here in the center column. And if you want to, to categorize the missed calls, you click on missed, incoming, and voicemail, and so on. Or you can also filter them from the top right-hand side here under these three dots. On the right-hand side, you can select uh, speed dials. You can select particular groups. You can create speed dial entries or list other favorite contacts that you want to call. On the bottom section, notice that there is this option for don't forward currently. That means that uh, my phone currently has been configured to not forward it. So it's going to ring and ring. And then after so many non-responses, after so many rings, then it'll go to voicemail. But if I want to forward it to voicemail automatically, all you have to do is uh, click on the drop down where it says don't forward, and then you can select to forward it to voicemail. If you wanted to change additional settings related to forwarding, you click here under more settings. And this is where you can specify how to handle the calls and how long it should be before sending the call to voicemail. Further down, notice that you have here how to configure the voicemail and um, you would click on this and follow the prompts for configuring the voicemail. Further down uh, under the ringtones area, you can specify the particular ringtones if a call is for you or if a call is forwarded or it's a delegated call and you can preview those ringtones as well. Now to get to those settings, you can go also here on the top right under settings next to the profile icon and click on settings and then click on calls all the way at the very bottom. In this module of the Microsoft Teams tutorial, I'll demonstrate how to listen and also view the transcript of voicemails in Microsoft Teams. So in the case where the phone system has been integrated into Microsoft Teams and you missed the call, you can simply go to that missed call and then on the right hand side, you'll be able to view the voicemail transcription. If you wanted to listen to the voicemail, you simply press play here. Notice that on the right hand side, you can also play it in a faster speed if necessary. Now to call them back, you can simply click on this call, audio call on the right hand side, and it'll call the number that they called from and they left a voicemail. In this module of the Microsoft Teams tutorial, I'll demonstrate how to configure voicemail. 
One of the ways to configure the voicemail is to go to the settings within Teams. So you go here under the, the three dots next to the profile picture and then select settings. Once in settings, go to calls and then click on configure voicemail. From here, click on record greeting. Once you click on record greeting, then follow the prompts to save the greeting and then you're all set. In this segment of the Microsoft Teams tutorial, I'll demonstrate how to create a personal Teams meeting room link so that you can send it to any users and they can join your Teams virtual meeting room without having to send them an actual invite. This comes in handy for open office hours for anyone to just join you in your meeting room. So here's the URL, it's a little long, and I'll post this in the description area. And the only difference that you need to change is that uh, down this highlighted area, this is where you need to specify to put in your email address that is associated with your Microsoft Teams account. So in this case, if I wanted to uh, join this personal meeting room for the uh, distance learning staff, I simply click on the link and then it says open this in Microsoft Teams. So obviously you have to have the Teams application installed and then you simply click on start call. At this point, it will ring on the other end of that user and they will join or ignore your call. This concludes the Microsoft Teams tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please subscribe to this channel, like the video, and even click on the little bell icon to be notified for new videos and tutorials to relate to Microsoft Office 365.